There's very little as exciting to a rail fan as the arrival of a passenger train. My wife Liz, her dad and I, boarded Amtrak's Coast Starlight in Klamath Falls, Oregon, just like this one in Paso Robles, California, heading south to meet another train in Los Angeles. And you're invited along for the ride. This California wildlife refuge greeted us as we awoke from hours of darkness. The Coast Starlight was passing through the vast Sacramento Delta, filling our window with wetlands teeming with birds. We saw many coots here, a duck-like waterfowl with a white bill. At times they seemed to be racing our train. The Sacramento Delta forms a vital support for numerous bird species who feed and rest here. That's not surprising since the Delta is located along the Pacific Flyway, a path for seasonal migration for many species. Even without the birds, it's a beautiful landscape. We don't call this the Bay Area for nothing. There's lots of shoreline here and plenty of bay views from the train. <laughs> While it's easy to imagine yourself far from civilization out here, California freeways seem to remind you that this is a major urban area, home to millions of people. Some of those people are homeless, setting up camps along the railroad tracks. One prominent landmark is the Martinez Bridge, parallel to the highway bridges of Interstate 680. Let's listen as the railroad bridge takes us high above the entrance to San Pablo Bay. We emerge from the bridge to the numerous refineries on the other side. This is where crude oil is turned into gasoline and other fuels. These huge tanks provide storage. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Martinez, California coming right up. As we got closer to the station, we saw these statues of great white herons. We hadn't seen them in previous years because we had been on the other side of the train. We had also missed this old steam engine and tender. Here is Martinez Station a transfer point for people boarding the San Joaquin for Bakersfield and the stations in between. On the side of the train opposite the depot, we looked out as the Coast Starlight eased out of the station and we were soon treated to views of the bay.
These old pilings along the shore must have supported something in the past. Now I could only imagine what had been here at the edge of the water. No imagination was needed here. There's still industry here on this edge of the bay. I was thankful for this view of some bridges, but you can't take such views for granted. This is an old sugar mill. I had driven across this old bridge many times when leaving San Francisco. It's the Vallejo Bridge. Now there's a new span for incoming traffic. There are places along here where you can look across the bay and see the city of San Francisco, but you have to look quickly before the view is gone. South of San Jose, the coast starlight enters the fertile Salinas Valley. This is California's salad bowl, where produce is cultivated and harvested. Most of the country's lettuce is grown here, along with spinach and other healthy greens. The fertile soil, irrigation, and the climate combine to make this the ideal location to grow these essentials. It's winter as we pass through, a time of rest for farmers from some regions. Not here. Crops are rotated throughout the year. Migrant labor does most of the hard work of harvesting this bounty. Here the fields are being prepared and planted for another season. Water from the Salinas River drains into Elkhorn Slough. This estuary provides critical habitat for coastal birds and marine mammals from the Pacific Ocean. In 2009, Liz and I took a boat tour of this slough. From the point of view of the small boat, we saw that Elkhorn Slough is teeming with life. We also saw the train tracks from the slough. A great amount of estuarine research is done here by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency and other organizations. The Nature Conservancy provides trails for public access. I always grab my camera when the train goes through here. Sometimes there's little to see from the train, but on our last trip we saw a sea otter. After Salinas, the Coast Starlight arrives at the town of Paso Robles. doesn't linger here. Paso Robles means the pass of the oak trees, and the Coast Starlight wastes no time climbing to that pass. This day it's pulling a private car.
Patron Aquila Express. Up here you can see where the Oak Tree Pass gets its name. And that brings us to Cuesta Pass, these mesmerizing hills mostly brown this time of year. It's from these brown hills that I saw our train's sister train, train 14, heading north out of San Luis Obispo. Passing the northbound version of our train is a quick blur usually. I could hardly believe my good fortune in seeing it patiently making its way to the siding where we awaited it. All three locomotives were passing just outside our window. Now the sleeping cars with sunlight flashing through the opposite windows. Light streams in to the beautifully set dining car. Seeing into the sister train like this is like watching yourself from the outside. Here's the business car, and then after that, the viewing car. It's crowded like usual. Now we see into the coaches as the sister train speeds up. Normally at a meet like this, everything is just a blur from the sister train. Not this time. Through the same window, we see our own train with two locomotives pulling us toward our next stop. And further up the hill, we see train 14 traversing the same track we were just on, headed for Paso Robles. I've seen some really cool things riding on Amtrak, but this was the coolest of all. Top all this off with a view of the trestle, and I have to list this as one of my most memorable train rides. We arrived at San Luis Obispo a little late, and it would soon be dark when we hugged the coast. With no sunlight, my beaming with excitement would have to light our way to Los Angeles.